shit. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, so I can. So we this was the rescheduled uh commit to hold from last Monday night. Um and this stems from the board meeting. We have Dan and Justin from Labella and uh Nate here from CNS and Alex as well, just to discuss um the possible capital project uh, that we would like to put for referendum in March. So there were some, obviously some questions I think from the board that the guys wanted to be able to offer any, a better uh, arena for question and answer and see what we can do to help get folks to a place of more comfort to uh, allow us to move forward with what, what uh, we think is the best move forward for the district, both short-term and long-term to get some capital projects open and start the process of uh, getting some work done that, that needs to be done and in advance of the obvious unknowns related to uh human standards. So I don't know if there's uh any questions that people have from the other night. What are the concerns that people had with putting forward essentially the meeting stem from concerns with uh moving forward with a resolution next week to be able to authorize the seeker and get the wheels moving for a capital project. I think uh, one of the things I was uh, interested in is, is relating uh, what we're talking about with the capital project to what we're doing with the redistricting discussions and uh, understanding how they either relate or don't relate. Uh, obviously, it'd be, it'd be really great if, if what we're planning to do under the, the capital project uh, has some bearing on the kinds of things we're thinking about doing redistricting wise. Uh, so that was one, uh, I think, an important point. The other, the other one was to kind of catch up a little bit uh, with uh, what's gone on in the past. We've gotten a couple of updates, uh, you know, in, in, you know, your big sheet, which are quite, you know, quite uh, useful and and, uh, and complete. But we see them kind of sporadically. So I personally, what you know, where we are right now with uh, with the current final phase of of the initial yep. 219 plan and, uh, and uh, what's hanging out there in terms of existing work. Like I know you, you, some of the activities have shifted towards the elementary schools in terms of cleaning up some of the things that we plan to do there. Although the bulk of the work obviously was focused on RFA and, uh, and, that, and that complex. So that helps it all. I, that, that, that would be helpful when we're, when we're talking about these things to kind of we can relate any of that, you know, one to another. Well, the, the first part, the, how it relates to the um, redistricting, it doesn't really. So the, the only way it would relate would be the opportunity to open up a project number at all the elementary schools to start getting that process working and flowing. You're not, at this point in time, we don't know enough about the redistricting to know what exactly needs to be done in the elementary. But by getting a project number opened up now in March, it's possible that we can get a jump on doing some of that work uh, above and beyond what they propose in terms of scope for the vestibules. What that is right now, you just don't know. It could be anything from converting classroom spaces to multiple office spaces to multiple office spaces to classroom spaces. Uh, maybe moving moving something around in the building. We don't know that until we know exactly what's going to happen with redistricting. And that is a whole separate <clears throat> process that is going to take time to develop. Do we know if what, this, what we're uh, planning on right now might have to be undone with the redistricting at all? It shouldn't be because right now all we're talking about is securing the vestibules of the elementaries. So we're also talking about some athletic kids too. But that, that's yes, that's completely separate from that. Would have nothing to do with the redistricting. So I was only referring to the elementary part of the project. Okay. I know I had some question about the athletic fields. I don't know if you had had an opportunity to kind of think that think about that. Oh one. yeah. It's right we there. Right, could, are we able to plug it? Pass it around. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll just hold it up to our head and like it'll download. Yeah, like do that. <laughs> Yes. Or wherever you have to you, you predict the inside angle. Uh, no, it's probably easier to plug it in. Nobody's watching anyway, so. Plug in. Uh... So much Facebook thunders. If you. Have a Sunday shocker. Peter, thanks for calling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Good. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. I think Dan. You did. Justin, you're sorry. I haven't been breaking or something. So he was here. Yeah. He paid me to do that. You have cheese or whatever. I got it all. Is there one of those little things on the side of it that it's How are the first? No, it's just the yeah. same or by being uh oh damage good. Oh, how long did you have to start supply chain problems? Put it next to a magnet. Come on. <laughs> Are you able to access your email on there, Peter? Yeah, email it to YouTube at RomeCSD.org. What other questions do we have while we work on technology? So my other question is, I, I, I'm a saver, probably like Paul Haggerty. I can't imagine what he's got stashed away in 20 years, but. So this was the plan that you gave to us in 2019. And it's really, I can't imagine that it's that far off what we think we probably need to do to buildings. And this is where my concern is. At that time, two years ago, to make modifications to Bellamy, obviously the most major one cloth to bring this building back online, Denti, Gansevoir, John Joy, Ridge, which at this point, I don't, I don't know if we would do both. Like, I don't know. Um, Stadium support, but I um, I think that was 4 million and I think we might've covered some of that and what we've already done, right? Um, RFA, and I don't know, there's 18 million here for RFA and I think that's also mostly the athletic complex. About a half million dollars to dispose of Staley, um, which I don't know if we've spent. Okay, so that's probably, and um just some incidental at Strau and some work at Stoke. So this was $94 million two years ago. And so I guess it's where it scares me. Now, on one hand, this 18 million was in here. Part of this was an athletic complex. But I need to wrap my head around what $94 million times three years of CPI, okay, particularly in this, this um, climate where building materials have way exceeded the standard, right? And where that leaves us, because I, I, like that's the piece I can't get comfortable with is, it sounds great to use $5 million right now that we've sa saved, I say saved loosely, um, to do something that I agree. I mean, my kids are athletes, it's important, but to not still know that there's still another $90,000, right? aside from that, or I'm sorry, 80, 80 something million. So to me, okay, my brain, I always correlate this to my own household and doing a budget and saving money. And I'm like, okay, so I live in a house and I know that I really want to put on windows. This winter has been brutal. Gas prices went up. My windows are 20 years old. I have to think about doing that. And oh, hey, there's a, there's a spot in my roof. That's not so great. I probably need to put on a roof, but screw all that. I'm going to put in a pool in the spring. And that's how my brain is processing it. So I need you to help me understand that very cart and horse or chicken and egg place that we seem 
to be in when I don't know what the roof is going to cost and I still really want to put in the windows okay. at $94 million times whatever percent increase. So uh, normally, most districts have a significant amount of, of dollars associated with capital project work that they can undertake at any given time. 94 or 150 million, you know, that, that's fairly common. Um, it's not always addressed at one time, usually. Um, a lot of times it's broken up on purpose um, to look at overall financing. You know, you do get some escalation in there, but you do also want to use your aid ability on all your buildings. So once a project scope is analyzed or say just a building and say you have a significant, significant amount of work there that exceeds or meets the uh, maximum cost allowance on that building. Usually what we do is we analyze, prioritize, and figure out what scope we need to progress with um, along the way so that you can both address the items that are at issue and then save capital reserve, which is your local share coverage during that time for the next project. So it's usually a multiple um, vote process to take care of all of the lowest buildings, not just one at a time. Um, because you're trying to leverage that aid and you are a very high aid ratio district, which is very good because, you know, say every dollar you get 98 cents back to the state. So it's a very- Except small, not on our incidentals though, right? So- Incidentals as well. There are things that are that available, threshold. but that's unless that's you go over the MCA limit. Yeah, yeah, there are limits on the MCAs independently for incidentals and for construction. So there's about a 20% pop for incidentals, which would include site work. You're right. And the other 80% is going to be construction within the building. So if we were at all at a limit to, to address athletic fields, in this case at uh, RFA, we would know because we're always looking at that. So if we were to go above and beyond that, yes, it would become pure local share, which this would not. So I mean, also all site work, you kind of want to do every single project as much as possible because you have that 20% pot to utilize. So it's always good to try and use it every project to address much larger, pro you know, you ultimately get a much larger project done by stepping it into every capital project if you can. So how does $94 million plus the inflation piece of this translate over time into a tax burden? So uh, once the project value is determined, uh, we, along with the financial advisor, make an assessment on what we think is aidable in the project. And we usually have a buffer in there. So if everything's 100% aidable, we go back and say, maybe it's all 95% aidable. So there's always a knowledge that there's going to be some unaidable portion of work, right? In your case, normally would be 2%, right? Because you're 98% aidable. We're backing it out of there to make sure that if some aid gets denied throughout that process, what you express to the taxpayer isn't going to be higher than they expect. So it's a buffer in there and you can always exceed that. So for getting let's say $100 million worth of work, 98 million would be rough numbers, would be coming from the state, 2 million from the local community. So I guess help me understand then why we'd want to exhaust our 5 million capital reserve out of the gate. You don't have to, it's just yeah. simply a way to say this pro this project we're asking for right now is a zero tax burden. You, 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 you kind of want to- exhaust. But I feel like it's smoke and mirrors because that's- the it's either money coming out of our checking account or money coming out of our savings account. It's still the only money we have. It's right. So, so the strategy usually is to keep voting for capital reserves to offset the local share burden. So there's no fluctuation when you go to vote for a project. So the goal is always to try and cover the local share with the capital reserve. So then you keep everything steady. So, so usually in between projects you're saving for the next capital reserve, reserve for the next project vote. Yeah. So you try and go along in that sequence say every five years or every three years, you wanna do a vote to accomplish this much scope and, the whole and then save in between into a new capital reserve to cover the next project. But the problem is other than having these, this COVID windfall that we have and being able to divert money there, yep. we're normally dipping into our other reserves to pay our bills. 
So I don't know how I haven't seen up prior to COVID in the prior 15 years of my involvement in the district, I've never seen us with a lot of money where we've been like, you know what, let's tuck that away. And so that scares me, right? I mean, we've talked about this. It's a, Paul knows as well, you know, Karen knows. No one wants another 2009 or 2014 where you're talking about losing people. We don't know how long we're going to ride this wave of education as being positively funded. And so it's like, it's a, I, fair, I, it's a fair concern, except you always need to do capital work on your buildings. Like this is a problem that every district has all the time. And if we don't get in the habit of putting money away in every budget cycle into a capital reserve, we're, we're not doing our due diligence moving forward. I mean, to be honest with you, we should not have to increase taxes ever again for capital project because of that capital reserve. And if we just get on that cycle, the capital projects are, they're just, you know this, like you mentioned with the houses, it doesn't go away. The buildings continue to deteriorate. You constantly have to upgrade and do work. So, But that's the part we're starting to resolve is the want list, right? Like I'd you know, love to add on to my kitchen versus the needless, the roof is leaking, right? And so how do we, how do we present ourselves to the community and say, yeah, I'm hundred percent confident in doing this nice to have athletic work now when we, when the whole community knows this glaring need to have from a flooded and lost building. But it's a combination, the, the flooded lost building thing, we can't start that process until we A, know more about redistricting and B, know about FEMA. So we first have to develop what it is that we need to be able to show FEMA and state ed, this is what we need. Give us the dollars, we need to do that. That's a separate argument that I think most people can understand. You can't put that together in a matter of months. The difference is, this is a combination of, uh, you're focused on the athletic things because it's the easiest thing to see, but there's also several million dollars worth of interior work at RFA. The fire alarm system has to be gutted and replaced alone. That's couple million, right? We decided about you've got you've got internal must haves at RFA that are associated with this project that weren't a part of the last one that are, it's all wrapped into one. The athletic thing is going to get the attention because that's the obvious, right? It's just that's a lot. It's and, not a need. No, the fire alarm system is a need. I can understand yeah, I can that. Make a difference. Yeah. And yeah. it's not an either or situation anyway. You guys are making an either or. They just said it wasn't either or. We can accomplish both goals with this project. I understand that. So, I mean, if we can get it both, if we can, if we can get it both projects done, or I'd say both. I mean, there's several, obviously, uh, without uh, any additional tax burden on on the on the community, then I think this is a no-brainer. I just, I, I, you know, you're, you're you say you're doing this according to your family budget, but you can't do it that way because the the funding process for your family projects is not the same as the funding streams and, and how we're going to be getting money for the projects that they're talking about. So, I mean, I, I get that you're trying to apply common sense and, and, and your, your daily routine to it, but you can't do it. If, if there's one thing I've learned in being on this board in five years is that common sense never applies to anything that we try to do here. Uh, primarily because we're getting- It's government. Know, and, what's that? Yeah, it's government in general. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, if, if they're telling us that we can get it done, uh, with without any additional uh, tax burden uh, to the community, and we can do all projects and not have to skip any. And I say we do it now because those athletic fields aren't going to be getting any cheaper as the years go on either. I mean, so if you if you want to save now and not do the athletic fields, how how, how much do you suppose it's going to cost you in five years to get it done? I guess tell so, me tell us what you're proposing and if you're still proposing the full shot on this. And I think the thing that if facilities could provide it for us or the AD or whoever or Rob, tell us what we're spending now on outside entities, like for a future meeting that we would not spend going forward. Like, right, if we add this baseball field, we're not gonna be leasing certain space or if we, so like help us, help us see that there's gonna be same thing, right? And I can't help but think of it this way. If I put windows in my house or we do the EPC, mm -hmm your savings on, a, on energy usage is supposed to offset your investment. If we invest in this, are we gonna experience a savings in outlays that we have for using, you know, clearly I know with Sally, we'd lost the cross country track. Like I get that. I guess my bigger concern isn't that can we, can we fund it all right now? It's, I don't remember a time other than this that we did see that extra to funnel back to the capital reserves. And that's the part that worries me. Right now that looks good for the next two or three years maybe, but 
every, I mean, you just presented us an initial budget that's already running at a 15 million, 17 million, no, 10 million, $10 million deficit. Like it, it's hard to. So correct me if I'm wrong, if, if I'm expressing it wrong. Okay. Yeah. But the way that I heard it was, is, is that you guys are preparing a budget based on 95% with the expectation that we're going to be funded at 98. And if there, if, and if we can get the project done at 95, that's how we create those reserves each, each and every year, right? Essentially. No, you can, it's to guarantee that you'll not impact the taxpayer okay. it's really a well, buffer. it's a buffer on that end but if you do come in at that lower amount that's more extra money that we can set up correct for correct the it's higher rateability you'll borrow less yourselves um I, you're saying five million use of capital reserve and i don't no, know what the numbers are right now 3.4 max 2.9 if we do the 17.9 and 3.4 if we do the 21.6 we do have 24, 25, the 25, 26. We got a million six dropping off in debt payments. So we got to So that's another methodology to, to allow us to do an you. So we could take the debt payments and all, and, and that could go. And, and they fall off every, every yeah, year. So we're getting, that's a big we're paying off some sort of project. Right. And so when that's paid off, you then say, oh, now I have that money and you funnel it back to another right. reserve. No, well, you I mean, only have it if you, if you budget for, remember, you're reimbursed for capital projects. So the reason that we're ahead on our on our capital projects is our building aid more than covered our expenses along with you know we got favorable financing on some bonds and whatnot which wound up that's why you see those numbers when uh, when uh, fiscal advisors comes in and they, they look at our our debt load over the years we're in the positive right now we're not paying there, there's no local share in what we're in our current debt and there hasn't been for a couple of years because. And I just want to make sure that that's where we can stay because people are really concerned right now. And while schools are being well funded, there are still a lot of people in fiscal crisis on the heels of what COVID did to them, what yeah, it but, did to their families. And but, I can't not think about that. But Tanya, I think we're, we're kind of mixing apples and oranges a little bit. Because you're taking a lot of debt that came out of uh, the reconstruction of the elementary schools and, and all the work that we've done up to date. And, and you're trying to compare that with some number looking forward, which is which has a different set of circumstances. We know where we stand with those projects because they're completed. We've got final cost reports. The, you know, we've got the aid. We know what the interest rates were on them. So we know that's why they can project out over time why our local share is going to be declining or slightly increasing. That's all work that's been done. So it's not like we're adding a new layer that local share that's already coming in you're, you're adding a new set of capital projects which you've got to fund you know, and, and that's a combination of, of, of what you're doing and, and what's what's the aidability on it and and then what the what the final cost you know what's allowed and what's not allowed you know going forward and uh, but it, but it it's sort of a new a new set of circumstances i think getting back to, to, to what i think we're talking about here is or what we should be talking about is we're talking about this athletic complex, which is, I don't even know what the, the numbers on it, but obviously it's, it's not trivial in terms of expenses. And, and when I look at that, I say, okay, well, how does that relate to what we want to do at the stadium complex where we have things to do? You know, we're, we're talking about doing work on the grandstand. We, we have the building there. That, that facility is used. Now, I know some people think, longer term that, that that facility is going to go away and somehow it's going to transition up to RFA. But I really think that's a stretch, you know, over the foreseeable future when you compare what's in the two locations, the accessibility to it. Uh, I just. But to that point, Paul, I think that they did say that we have some money left over to try to deal with those issues, right? From our deal with project. what issues? The state, the, the, the state, the state has money about six times. Now. We haven't started anything, right? We have not. And we can't ignore that that needs to be done. Yeah. Okay. So basically, you have two tools to fund projects to have a no tax impact, or you have the capital reserve, which you have, which you're saving on, which you probably you generate new ones all the time. And that's to, for all future capital projects. And you fill up that pot of money and you use a portion of it or all of it whenever you need to do a capital project. The other one is the uh, debt falling off on an old project. 
And what we try to do is align a newer project to take on that debt when you have the drop off to keep the tax flat. So you can generate a project simply by debt drop off on those old projects. So that's a strategy we're always looking at when we're okay. trying to accomplish that work for us. And you can lower the budget by a million six, but then you're going to lose a million five ninety in state aid. You know, it's not going to help the budget. You know, what I mean, it lower the budget, but it wouldn't help the overall financial picture, I guess. And it would make it harder down the road to yes. then do a capital project. You mm -hmm. let that debt fall off in 24, 25, yeah. then you you won't you're the next time you vote on a project, you're gonna have to make up that reduced debt plus the cost of the project. Right. So then you're really leveraging your ability to pull in state aid money with we just want to get the best yes from the community. You know what yeah. I mean? You don't want project fatigue people to the point that they're like, I can't say yes again. They have to be able to understand one, their return on investment, and two, that we're not overburdening them. Right. And if, if, the, if the idea and the concept is to keep taxes the same, that's kind of that direction. We're well, we've tried to not go flat, right? Like Peter has really so for made capital the, for capital. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. want to keep your taxes flat. So you generally, you want to do a project vote every year that kind of aligns with the your capital reserve and a combination of your debt falling off. And if you can do, you break up your projects into small things every year. You, I mean, you're going to wind up with vote fatigue if, if that's how people feel. It's just never been done that way in Rome. But most communities vote every year on a capital project of some kind. Some of them are huge, depending on their capital reserve and their debt falling off. And some of them are just minor because they might only have, you know, $700,000 falling off. And so they do the vote just to keep it in people's minds that this is the cycle. This is what we do. Okay. See, what I worry about is we're going to put a, a, a capital project out there. And, and right now, the current schedule is put it out in March. And it's going to have certain things in it. And, and those things are primarily, well, with the exception of the athletic field, are going to involve uh, the elementary schools, correct? Correct. That's the best yeah. And best bills in BC, building condition survey, right. maintenance related, infrastructure related items that we know currently need to be. Yeah. And we've got a lot of schools. We, we know we want to bring those all up, you know, to standard or improve them you know the, they've recently been renovated but there's still there's still issues because there's renovations that don't, we didn't build new schools we basically refurbished what was there to the best we could and but what we are going to be faced with is out of the redistricting discussions we have to do something is that, is that, i mean is that is that fair? I mean, I would we, think so, yeah. we can't stay with our existing right. buildings because yeah, well, we and the numbers of students. Right. Space. No, I mean, this yeah. is from 2019, right? We knew we needed space no, before no, COVID no, and before. I'm talking about the current. Staley. You know, Staley going away in six schools. And we've got all, we've got K through six in those schools. They fit, but. Not they're, not well. They're, they're yeah. full. We don't yeah. want to do that for the foreseeable we're future. All, we're on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So we've got to turn around to the public if we put a thing out in March, probably within a year, and 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 decide Correct. if we have to do significant capital work, which I think we probably will have to because we, we know we've got problems with those elementary schools like parking problems and um, and and needed additional space, so we're going to have to do that. And we're, we're so we're going to be following one capital, so one referendum on top of another, but they're both going to be directed at at the at the elementary schools. And, and I think what a number of us are worried about is the stuff we pick to do with the first one. How is that going to impact us down the road when we decide what we have to do with the second? Because we're going to have to do that pretty fast. It's not like that's two or three years in the future. I don't think. I think we've no, got. We've got we, we've said, like we said, the last thing our plan would be to do a referendum in December for anything that addresses the reorganization. The, you got to remember that, and this is going to be the general personal community is not going to understand this, but the purpose of tacking on the elementaries into this project is you get the project, you get the each building with an open project number now, and we can get in front of some of those general things that we think are going to happen. It's not a guarantee that you're going to find out 
during the course of the project that there's some extra funds that we can do something with ahead of the redistricting work in two or three years when it's all said and done, but it's a, it gives you a chance to do that. And I keep pointing back to just look at the current RFA project. We were only supposed to get a track, a field, part of a roof and some flashing work done. We're on to phase three now. We're talking about maybe having enough money to pull all the bleachers out of the stadium, recoat or redo the stadium now. We were talking about scoreboards, we're talking about electronic signs for the school. We're, we've added a ton of track space to the, to the track project and new fencing. We added most of the roof at the top of it. Windows, stairwells. I mean, they've done such a good job managing the project that we're getting extra things out of what we. My thought is with the elementaries, you can take the elementaries out of this vote march if you wanted to and just focus on the RFA stuff that still needs that to be done, but it doesn't make any sense. Why not get the projects opened up and start getting some of the. Yeah, you can get the BCS work going, or maybe you say the vestibules aren't really something that's important to us. And we only want to focus on the uh, the BCS items that we know have to be done no matter how you reorganize. That can all be done. It's not gonna change the dollar amount in a major totality, <clears throat> but it's the concept of getting the project number opened up at SED so we can start doing some of that work that we know has to get done ahead of the redistricting, which really by December, way before December, we're gonna know exactly what we're dealing with with FEMA. <laughs> But when, when we talk about the, the March referendum, that's going to have specific things in it. So it's not going to just, it's not going to be a, a blank check that we can then turn around and spend on anything. We're going to have, have to said something about in that referendum about, for instance, if we were going to do, uh, instead of doing uh, the security upgrades, we're going to do the bus loops or something like that. That had to be in, in the language in the, the language that is the language that will go in the resolution can be written vague enough to give you essentially carte blanche at every building to, to then finalize the scope. I think what you're trying, the concepts that are being presented is you're trying to take something to the community that the community can get behind. If we get to June or August or September, and we recognize that the redistricting is going to significantly impact one of the other elementary schools that we thought we were going to do BCS or vestibule work at. And the team says, well, hold up. We know we're going to put a major addition on that building. Let's not do anything there. Then those funds become available to go, you know, somewhere else. If they're with regard to like the different stadium concepts, I mean, we have 10 or 13 million in the in the current twenty one million dollar um, proposed project, if we pick a you know if the board weighs in and we say you know hey we don't want to do that full thing we only want to do part of this or another concept and that concept now costs nine million we we can take the the three or four million and we can move that around I mean that's if we can do that, I, that, I think that would be a, for me, it would be a big selling point because I think we know that we're going to have to do some things just looking at these different options. We know we've got some mismatches out there in terms of, 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 of students and catchment areas and buildings. So we could easily put multiple additional classrooms on probably several different buildings. And I know as a fact that when the buildings were referred, the thought of expanding them was given. So we, you know, we, we did, we, we have a logical place, for instance, if you went to Stokes, where the addition would go, or even Ridge, which is pretty crowded, we still put that, that playscape over to the right because we figured that if, if we added uh, additional classrooms, they would go out that wing and that would go right out towards. So if it was right off the corner of the building, you would, you'd have to move the playscape. So that's there and, and adding, cla adding classrooms if the rest of the building infrastructure supports it is, is not a, a terribly expensive or, or complicated thing to throw an addition on there. In fact, it's the kind of thing I believe, I you guys are the expert. It's the kind of thing that lends itself to being done even when school is in session because it, it's, the construction is isolated from what's going on in the building and then opened up. So yeah, I wouldn't advise, I don't know if you're going here or not, but I wouldn't advise that we take 
if we end up with a surplus, then we if we're going to put an addition on a building. We should tell the community we're going to build additions on buildings. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't advise that we save money on a field and then go put an addition on a building. I don't right. think that. But what I what I do think you could do is if we hit, you know, again the fall, and we know that we're going to put an addition on one of the elementary schools, and we know that that larger footprint is going to take increased mechanical equipment or we're going to have to replace boilers and HVAC equipment and we have funds available, then we could take the funds that are available and start to pick away at those types of items for the addition. Yeah, it's the lead time to, to actually uh, implement those classrooms that bothers me because of this, you know, referendum, uh, you know, bidding and, and so forth. That, and you're, you, you showed it in, in what you showed us last week, how long the tail is between the planning and when you can, can start construction and complete it, you know, even for what you talked about already to us, it's it's like three years to fruition on some of these projects, which are not monumental. I mean, it's like the revamping of the uh, of the security area. For, for better or worse, right? When we laid out the ninety million in twenty nineteen, if we would have said yes, go, right? We actually would have been talking probably about a construction update. Per cloth instead of trying to figure out what we're doing currently. So, and honestly, I don't. I think if we hadn't had COVID, we probably would have kept talking about this. But I think we all got consumed with well I survival. Thought, <laughs> no, I think we made a strategic decision. That the team made a strategic decision not to go bite off ninety million dollars and to with no reserve so with no reserve help. established to to break the projects up into smaller phases established the capital reserve which you didn't have when we first started I, I mean i think that was a conscious decision to, and this is so all of this work that is now in here was originally included in the 2019 project right okay. so it's the current project that we're doing now and this is really the second wave of that 2019 and then to your point there's going to be a third project or maybe a third and a fourth project that's going to come that eventually is going to encompass the almost the entire scope of that 90 million so if we had done that it would have been a 90 million dollar referendum essentially back then yeah, yeah. Sure. so the and the other piece of this that is still in the back of my mind as i mentioned last time is well two things one you know there is a, a want versus a need list right but then there's also, as Peter, you know, as we talked about, there's always something that's going to come up. You know, Strau just was completed in 2018, 19, 18, someone. It reopened anyone? in 18. Um, you know, and still there's things, right? Like things we didn't get. We didn't get to the stairs. We didn't put a practice field there. We, the windows, he needs windows. You know what I mean? Like there's still, so I don't also don't want to. It's our it's that's that's our other need for the long range planning is there's always going to be things that come up and what are those things and I went on and, and tried to look at these building condition surveys. I mean they're just really yeses and nos there's really no narrative attached to any of these that says. You should plan for the following yeah, the building condition work that, that is in there that is a very useless document that is the required submission to SED. Okay, that's where Peter told me to go. And the one I did to happen it, it to look is, at was the stadium support one. That but is the DCS, but the documents. Thank you. I thought it was just me. I was no, like, no, no, no. I'm getting nothing from these 48 pages. And no. I just. So, yeah, but, so you're looking for a design and, and the building condition survey is not. No, I'm looking for a, a list of in the next five years, you have to think about that boiler in the next. That is, that's, that's, that's exactly that's how they do it. That's how it's laid out. The cost of those items. So between, go ahead. so so we've gone through as best we can with it because we didn't conduct that um, to to load all of the issues on the buildings into a list format to apply costs to start select priorities on those lists. Okay. So it's and that's the piece we need. What's that? I said that's so we're always looking at we, that, right? Right with with everyone, Alex and everybody else about hey this boiler is terrible, whatever we need to replace it even though it looks great and it's it's newer. It's it's going. So we're always trying to filter that in. And then we're also trying, like the, say if you need new classrooms to redistribute kids somewhere. Um, that's a whole process we have to go through. We take the plans, we kind of show the additions at all these buildings. We have to submit that to SED. They have to analyze and determine your new building aid unit calculation. 
then we have to take that back, balance it against the estimate, see what tax impact that might be, and then we share that with the municipal financial advisor. Then we can present that to you to say, hey, if we do this, here's what this project will cost, but we'll also filter in a lot of those items that are in the existing portion of the building, infrastructure-wise. So these are the highest need items, and we're going to constantly talk about creating alternates, things we can cut or add, depending on how well we do on bid day. So if you if you pass a referendum, you don't have to spend that money. We didn't. We had a number of referendums that covered the buildings and, and, and covered straw. In fact, when we got the straw, we had two different referendums that we could have put straw against, and we chose one because they involved multiple buildings. And so over time, we used money from those referendums, but we didn't spend it all. And that's why the referendum language is usually written as vague as possible to be able to push and pull scope as we need once you know construction starts to happen and design happens. You know, we could vote today. And if something's not happening for two to three years, there's obviously things that are going to come up between now and then. And that gives us that opportunity with the looser uh, referendum language. Yeah, the, the critical point here is seeker process because you have to adopt seeker before the referendum language. So seeker is going to analyze and it's really critical that you know additions or anything else critical to an environmental impact like stadium lighting or something like that has to be in that language or that'll be a major problem moving forward. So there's two things. There's the seeker language, then there's the proposition language. Um, seeker is usually more stringent, we'll say. So we've thoughtfully taken anything that might be in this remaining in this project that you're still you know, doing a phase three or phase four on. We've just added that to the seeker and just in case numbers come in very well, we can accomplish those things really easily because they're already loaded in there. So we're always thinking about that kind of stuff and picking up more for you as we move along. <clears throat> you know, the BCS is on a cycle. And since the last cycle, you could identify some items, but in that time period, some more critical things could have failed. Right. And so if you just went by the BCS, you'd miss all the things that happened in the interim. It could be even more important. Well, even when we jump construction, right? Like things came up. We had an issue with the sewer at Bellamy, right? Like we had an issue with the HVAC at Ridge. Like even though we've done these buildings, like sometimes, I mean, I deal with it in my own work, right? Like I've, I've been dealing with a an alarm going off with the humidity system for 18 months. Like we finally, seven visits later and 12 attempted fixes. Oh, look, we figured it out. So unexpected things come. And I, I think that's the, the hesitancy, you know, the last two years kind of left us with anything can happen. Holy cow. Yeah. Can, can we put this on hold for a minute? Because sure. Mr. Malachi's got to yeah. go. And he wanted, I just want to see. He he wanted to see that. That. Yeah. I appreciate that. Channel. I'm going to email these to you. Um, yeah, but I, 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 I do. This is simply just the, the, can you orient me here a little bit? Is that the, is that is this that is RFA can, can right you, there to the right? Will that roll forward a little bit? This is RFA. Okay. Um, when you do review these on your own, pay attention down here. There are five options that we put together. Some of these you've seen before back in 2019, but it was our idea to try and walk through the iterations and thought processes between them. So, um, I mean, this was the very first one, and I think that's the one you may have in your packet. Time. Probably. This is incorporating a stadium. Right. So obviously, you know, we we are currently talking about a baseball, softball, and multi-purpose field. Maybe or maybe not the football stadium, which that could be built now in five years and ten years. Right. We could just do this portion and this portion. So okay. keep that in the back of your mind that we can phase that if the ultimate goal. At some point, would be to bring a stadium. Yeah, I don't, we we were not initially talking about adding a stadium to this. So right. this anything you see for that looks like a stadium or a track would be a placeholder for a future possibility. That's well, what that's what we asked for last time, right? Was can we put a grass practice field where we well, might want to? I just didn't like the the overlapping of uh, the last project, and I really like that first one. If you want to go back to the yeah. panel, yeah. So this is sort of a like a go back through history lesson. Yeah. I'm sure if, if we didn't share this with you or you haven't seen it, yeah. uh, that we have gone through a lot of iterations, yeah. but also showing you some options that you can put a stadium here. Ultimately, that's the goal. So there's there's some further down the road. This option also gives you an opportunity that you can, not that you can't conduct them independently in the other schemes, but you really have a separated spot. So parking is a little bit easier, whatever, and you can have your softball, baseball isolated. 
And you might be able to do the grass field sort of in that orientation before you have to the stadium if you wanted to do that. Right. Will there be enough parking there? We, we haven't walked through all parking counts and everything yet. I mean, that's something that we really develop once we get into design. I mean, we could settle on this, but this may change between mm -hmm. now and when we actually go out to bid with it. Then they're, they're Depends your capture. Are you capturing this? Are you capturing, you know, exactly. where are people coming from and what's acceptable? So and this ground is, space between the tennis courts and the baseball field, is that, is that that's unusable that's in all of them? That's actually wetlands. Yeah, so there's a, go ahead. Sorry. So, you know, you can see this access road through here. Mm -hmm. If we were disturbing, say, a half an acre with that asphalt, we have to replace that half an acre of wetlands somewhere else. Okay. So we are trying to basically all costs avoid mm -hmm. any disturbance in there. And it's hard to see, but there is a water management pond down here that we are trying to stay away from too, because that actually captures this entire property's runoff, um, which we will have to do a lot of <laughs> um, water retainage throughout the site, probably underneath the turf. Uh, just because of all the wrong. And so, that's, that complex is not accessible at all. I mean, it's talk about egress and you know getting in and out. It's really dependent on the development to the left, which is you know the, which well, we're talking about. Well, there's already seven houses yeah. under construction over there. You would already be able no. to access through the through the road through the Haven and from our family. There's already roads there. This, this was done, I believe, from a traffic study mm -hmm. that required that we're going to have to put that access point in because of the way the traffic flows. Are we talking about up top? Yeah. Oh, okay. That, that, that there. access we're talking about. Is required. That's Geiger Road up there, right? This top one. Yeah, yes. we were told. I mean, now there is a stoplight up there, but yeah. we were told, I think, by the DOT that it would be too congested if we do this work mm -hmm. to not put another access road in so we can basically split traffic mm -hmm. between the two mm -hmm. entry points. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd be backed up for quite a while. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that lower and then, road is the old, the so old base road, and there's also a, a railroad track and a, a major, um, you know, outlet for the because uh, I think all the water from that end of the of the the surrounding buildings, the the the, the, uh, the hospital and the complex across the street, all that water comes down through. There's some massive pipes in that little. What land that you had to, you know, the, that has a little. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're constantly dealing with interference with wetland, railroad, property line, and major grading issues yeah, it's, coming it's, down. So we're working, balancing through all of that to get something usable. Did you guys go through this one already? Sorry, we were popping. Sorry. So this was the August 1st, 2019. Correct. Now, this next one that you're on right now, this is the September 18th, 2019. This basically moves the tennis courts closer to the gymnasium so they could be used easier during the day for present. Also does not really provide an option for a future stadium. Correct. Just so you have some yes. great, you have some green land, but because of the way the stadium would have to be oriented, this, this concept would not really provide for that option down the road. And that was done with the thought process that there's a commitment to the current the stadium current location. that still receives aid from this building. Which is what you're working on now. Back in 2019, right there. This is the most recent rendering that you saw the other week. Yep. yep. Which you know, similar thought process, uh, but we are kind of shifting locations of the fields and orienting them um, to true north on the third baseline for baseball. We are allocating a natural grass uh, practice field for baseball, which you know we touched on that briefly last week. To, to your point, but that doesn't... before, the striping does not have to be permanent. A lot of districts don't stripe all those athletic fields and the outfields that can be done with a temporary yeah. paint for the fall yeah. and then washed away for the spring. So you could have those fields for competition if you wanted to uh, and stripe them only in the fall um, using a special paint. But, we, you know, because that, that's a concern I had, too. It was pretty busy in the middle of the turf. Just the red end fields. And, that still doesn't lend itself to a stadium, right? That because no, this is now that yeah, okay. the correct. So the next two you have not seen yet. Um, so this one, I think Kevin and I are in most favor of it. Uh, one, it does bring your tennis courts back closer to the school for use during PE class. Um, we are maintaining the correct orientation on the softball baseball. And we are isolating the football stadium on its own, so it can be built later. 
and it'll have its own dedicated access point and parking. Um, and it really allows you to get it oriented correctly and not try and shoehorn it in here with the baseball field. And, um, and it kind of brings us a little bit away from the grade that's right up against the building. So it's a little bit less earthwork as well. And you wouldn't have to come back into that area again for construction if this was to be done later. Mm -hmm. That's done already. Right. Okay. still need an access road for that one. There is one. Yeah, maintaining that. So this could be a grass field in the scenario that obviously the stadium is not going to happen now. So you don't have to build an access road for that one. So. Uh, oh, we would. For, we don't we have would. one right now. Yeah, it would, it would be, be a part of the project. If, oh. if, if things have changed in terms of traffic, lights and things like that, we'll be analyze it. But as of right now, we're holding it because that's what we were told. OK, so two questions on these options so far. One, the thing we have absolutely lost is our cross country track, right? Like we've lost. Mm, no, no we, just, we just need to. We'll show you again the path. No, no, we lost our. Oh, we lost the oh, at Staley. Staley. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah we showed so it. that is a needed replacement right now. We don't have a functional, safe cross country trail. Yeah, so it, was, it was shown here, so we can show it again if this is acceptable. It's that purple line that runs all the way around. So we added the cross country track to this. We just haven't added it to the new concepts. Okay. We just did since our last meeting. And then the other thing is neither this one, can, I'm sorry, just real quick, go back to the other one. First one. first one. Okay. So first one, whether we went with a stadium now or later or a grass field now, this would still give you a practice track in the immediate future. Because now we're, when you do this at the bottom of this hill, there's currently a practice track down there and that is utilized, correct? It is or now that the stadium has been redone, is everything shifted? Uh, it's, it's used on occasion by the modified track team. Okay. My, my recommendation for the track would be uh, actually add a track, a practice track at Stroud so that the modified kids don't be bused anywhere. Th that's a factor of all of this we haven't been able to talk about is the amount of transportation we spend busing kids from RFA right. to the, either Stroud or the old site or Stroud kids up to RFA. For them. Right. So if we can start that process, I mean, I don't know that we haven't gotten as far as talking about what it would take to get a track back there. At, at Stroud, where the um, I think practice football field, I think we just needed it, right? We got rid that Use came out of the plan when we not, waited too long to do it. Design. Uh, right. I believe there's underground drainage in there. Yeah, it's got drainage. The sand uh, drainage, but or yeah, saw drainage, sorry. Um, okay. But that would be that would be an ultimate thing. I mean, you could you could rebuild a track here. Um, as part of the project, I don't know that we've really talked about that, right? We've talked more about the grass practice field than replacing the center track. Well, because in the converse, the dialogue of a need versus a want, right? Like you have said, I mean, so we've done a lot of that flipping for a lot of years. Kids would practice at this track and then go, go compete at RFA, or kids would practice at Strau and then go play at the stadium. Like we're not, we are shuffling kids a lot. So I, I just wondered in all of those, if we waited down the road, if we still would have a practice track. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously the, down the road, mm -hmm. but I think this, this does accomplish a lot of things and really gets those tennis courts back like into that. the building. I like, that. I like that. I like that too. And then what's the last one? That's put, is that putting it where the parking is? So, <laughs> yes, so, that no, that see the road on the far right, oh, the parking is, right. but we do need more parking. So the last iteration uh, brings the stadium back over to the main area, but you can see it's a little shorter and wider. It's called a broken back, broken back track. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't really think it's ideal. I mean, it does obviously work, but you are very shoehorned in here. So I mean, even for a foul ball on baseball, you would probably need netting or something to try and keep mm -hmm. foul balls going onto the track. So. It's certainly an option, but um, I think that option D probably works the best mm -hmm. in terms of overall planning. Obviously, we can massage this, you know, countless ways. And once we know a distance that you guys want for your cross country track, we can get that implemented. As well. So then over here where this football field is or, or anything that goes in that area where your hand is, mm -hmm. is currently practice lacrosse fields, correct? Yep, and yeah, tennis, tennis courts. That's, courts right here. Yeah, so the tennis courts will be taken out. And we look to make sure that those are positioned correctly and crowned correctly graded for this, grass practice fields. 
until the future when we wanted to. Yeah, and I imagine there's like area. lockers and stuff there too, right? So that they don't have to go to the main building in our fan and walk all the way down to the stadium. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear Lockers. There'd be like lockers. Restrooms, lockers. Restrooms, lockers. Well, there's, there'd be nothing over here, just like there isn't anything today for tennis. There's no there's no infrastructure. He's saying if you build this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, yeah, we have, we kind of develop, sorry. Um, some buildings here, right? And that'd be like a hub for this space. And yes, there'd be grandstands and concession building, whatever makes sense over there. Watch, you know, so that the athletes don't have to trudge from RFA all Yeah, if we had to build locker rooms in there, fine. Yep. I'll do it. I don't know how that wasn't thought about 25 years ago, but okay. You could build a monorail too for it's, safety and travel. It's very rare to actually have what you have because the code requirements for the current. Uh, Stadium that you have, you have to have uh, occupiable space under a grandstand is usually no bueno. So mm. because it has to be built so robustly for fire fire mm -hmm. separation, mm. but we can do it. It's possible. No, no, no. I mean, because like I've been, I mean, you know, my, again, my kids play sports. Mm. I've been to Liverpool. I've been to Central Square. I've been like I've been to some places that have amazing facilities. Like. And I do think it's important. I give the comparison all the time. White Sparrow's right down the road. They have two fields behind their middle school on Ariskany Boulevard and a gorgeous field at the high school in Marcy, right? On 291. So this is this is the sort of the long conversation where that's not going to be an aidable piece of the project. So you have to build enough of a project to have an unaidable portion be covered within your local share so okay but there's also been conversation in our community about we we talked about this before we did the stadium last time we had an amazing initiative in this community under think rink we have had people come forward and say we will spearhead fundraising and help contribute towards i mean you keep come on you're from liverpool there's there's sponsors all over their friggin scoreboard there's you know like there's people who want to contribute and put their name on something and there's the community is behind athletics so none of us disagree that this this matters mm -hmm. it's just discerning in our heads that the instructional need matters the most and balancing doing it all you do have to remember anything that's donated needs to cover 100 percent of the cost so you if they're going to donate a field they got to cover 100 percent of the cost but i don't think it's the field i I'm think it's things that. like a scoreboard a concession stand like, some of the say, incidentals you know if we say that this complex right here is going to cost I'm going to number $5 million. You can't fundraise $4 million and say we're going to use local share for another million. It has to be all or nothing. So that's why scoreboards are an easy thing, right? Um, maybe you get lucky. What was that? Dugouts. Dugouts. You know, there, there are some low hanging fruit that, yes, donations would be something that can be done if necessary. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Bye, Joe. See you again tomorrow. Yeah. All right. I literally can't believe how many nights we spent together this month. Oh. Does anyone like this? I love. Okay, so now give a cost comparison between the four or five that you just put up there. You're up. <laughs> no, no, no. Hit it, Nate. They just it's your the first time 15 minutes ago. No. Um, essentially, to do any, to build that track for that stadium complex on the other side of there adds, I mean, that's you're probably all of $5 million. But if you go like back up to one of those, what, what if you don't do this part? That at all. All of that fits within that $13 million that. We had outlined in the in the current. How much more is the cross country track? Like we can't let that's that. All that's all in. That's in there. Sorry, that's all prepared for you. Okay, and if you and, and that would include the site work to prep that as a grass practice area. Up here. Yep. You better say yes because more. Um. <laughs> well, I guess I just like that's the concern, right? The the yeah. goals of this are yeah. stop using third party space keep our kids at the high school going straight to their practice area if possible we would have to look at what would really even be required there since it is practice lacrosse right now i mean it may be well enough graded that we could just stripe it and use it well we do i mean the the uh, club teams. So yeah, yeah. So we yeah. Use and get it graded you've got enough space all through here to their soccer it uses this back corner because the tennis courts are 
kind of in this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, whether we position it right now or whatever to ghost in where it'll be in the future. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at how many we can fit it fit in there. Right now, there's about one. If you go up one slide, you know that was the intent of the project, the, what we presented to you last time. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of moved that over here. I just don't think that that positions us for future. Don't forget the tennis courts are shot currently. What do you mean? I'm sorry. No, this wasn't. No, that's why I'm saying now. Yeah. What I'm saying is that was accounted for, so that is just moving over here now, and tennis moved over there. So we just kind so of. So you're saying it. that they already planned the, the cost of a grass practice surface for now, so that if you put a grass practice field where that shows a stadium, that cost has already been developed and associated mm -hmm. in the in the previous numbers that you saw. And in these down the road iterations, we will have a plan for some type of enhancements that we lost at Stroud, right? Because what that's, do you mean? So the first plan, before project. you came here, Peter, the first plan included a field and a track at Strau or the modified kids to play at Strau. Because no matter what we do right now, even though we just put all this money into this turf, we have a congestion issue, right? Our kids play modified football at Geyerfield. So, yeah, I mean, what I would say, and I, this is brand new to us right now, so I don't want to speak for them, but the easy solution of that would be to add Strau to this list of projects, open up a number, and maybe you start with something simple like the stairwell, stairwell. some windows, something to get the, the money flowing mm -hmm. and then give ourselves, you know, get it on the seeker and get the get the project moving towards the March vote. And then by March, we'll have a better scope of what that will be in the cost, because right now we're not talking to, for next week. We're not talking about dollars and cents for the referendum. We're talking about in order to do a referendum in March, we got to get the seeker and resolution on the agenda next week to authorize all of that stuff to be done for a March referendum. The resolution will come at a later time that says this is the referendum. Here's the amount we're, we're asking for. Here's the tax <coughs> levy associated with the referendum X, Y, and Z. Not a long time after, but we're buying her at least two weeks. <clears throat> and then, pardon my lack of knowledge about this, but. <coughs> Can any of some of those things like windows be a new EPC? It's going to be really tough to do windows as an EPC because it's the energy savings. And no matter what you do, we still have not found a way to make windows really efficient. Correct. Yeah, sure. really it's not going to be. There'll never be something that'll be part of an EPC. Okay. You you normally have to leverage much better payback items with something that has lower payback, like an insane amount of LED going from fluorescent to LED. Okay, something. but didn't we do a lot of that when we did straw to begin with? Yeah, but, so, the, but the windows yeah. are almost new. No, no, no. So so we wouldn't necessarily open an EPC at straw because when we renovated straw, yeah. we did that with energy enhancements as part of the base project. Yeah, I don't know what you'd you want to run it for lighting and stuff, right. but they I mean they could run all those analysis on. All the different buildings if there was interest in doing more energy work. Okay. But windows would be windows for that building to do under an energy project would be very difficult. The, the, as Kevin said, the scope of the energy project would have to be so massive with lighting and all sorts of other high efficiency measures to be able to offset the, the cost of the windows. The windows and in that building would be, a, yeah, and it will still count count against your maximum cost allowance on your building. So you might as well just do that stuff that's not really good for an EPC in a capital project itself. So. You're generating a lot more aid in a capital project than you are in an energy performance contract. Oh, and now see, and I was thinking opposite. Maybe, okay. maybe I think the, the yeah, energy the, performance doesn't count against the debt limit. Is you yeah. correct with that? Yeah. So that's why you do that. So it's a way to get a little more. Savings. Well, the savings and that, but you're looking for straight dollars. You're gonna, you're gonna, you can vote it in a capital project. Absolutely, in my opinion, always put it in a capital project. I think the advantage of the energy performance is that it pays for itself over the 18 years or however long, and really, it an energy performance project is most effective if you couple it with. A capital project to to help you do additional scope, right? So if you're going to okay. do work at a building as part of a capital project, and there's a bunch of energy enhancements there, then you can pull like let's lighting is the easy one. You pull the lighting out. You do that as an energy performance contract. 
and then you take the costs associated with the lighting and you do that. You do other work. So a better example for that would be Stokes because Stokes was our first renovation and it's now 15 years old. So we probably didn't look at that. So that might be a way to maximize what we do at maybe Stokes more than. Well, they've, they've already been through the EPC process. All the other elementary schools are EPC. They're all updated. They're all and, up to, okay. Yeah. It's a nice way to extract some infrastructure. But items. to your uh, point, sorry, sorry, away, from, away from the instructional pieces. So that when you vote, you're voting on like good instructional pieces or athletic pieces. And to your point with Stokes, all the lighting is new. So when we do do a capital project there, we don't have to worry about replacing the lighting because we already did it under the EPC. So okay. to some extent the- I didn't the know same, all the elementaries have been done under, yeah. okay. With some items, not new, you know, it's not a total redo of, of the HVAC systems or anything like that. Things that would pay off on return. Things that would fit in the EPC. Not, right? not everything. So there's still BCS items in the that would need to be in the capital project that might be related to HVAC. But, uh, we know for like the heater heating ventilators of Bellamy need attention. That's one thing that they've already identified that could you don't need to worry about redistricting to get cranking on that. I mean, we can start fixing those now. So that's the next part of this question. If we want to roll this in, I don't think any of us can walk out to the public in March and be like, hey, we're just going to do some athletic fields because people are, will think we're nuts. So now the next question is of what was presented to us last time, do we or don't we want to do the vestibule piece, right? Or is there something else? Like where are we at right now to a full 21 million includes BCS items, vestibules, and an athletic space. But not shroud, correct? Correct. There's Current. a small scope in there for straw, like I the water this, main. Yeah, yeah, that's what we have your water. The water main will be there. So there's small dollars associated with straw. Right. 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 We do some stuff in straw over here. Domestic water in pipes in the building need attention as well. We have section. Yeah. 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 And that's really the difference between the 21 and the 17 is the BCS. If we can do it all. Remember another Showing big piece to this too, though, is the tax cap. Okay, so if we drop that one year, if we drop that 1.6 off, you can drop, depending on the other figures, you can drop to a negative tax cap. A year where we had a 1.8% increase, I like just it's a million, so two million from the tax really went to negative mm -hmm. negative five percent. So we got it. That's why you want to make sure, no matter what, I'm not telling anybody what to do, but try to get to that mm -hmm. million six payment in that year or we'll, we could lose money. So if we lose tax, we lose that every year. Yeah. It, and this still does not include, or do we have to take that out of reserves, whatever we need to do to the stadium? Because we cannot, like that can't be a far out thing. We spent That's how many? A, right now we've got a conversation to be able to pay for that out of phase three, we're looking at that. Money we've already got. Money we've already got allocated for the state. Okay, but what doesn't get done since we spent that money six ways? They, we just landed that to the seeker for this current project you're looking to possibly vote for in March, so that if there are funds available, like there's a there's certainly a dollar sum right on all of this an estimate, and as we evolve the design, numbers are going to change. So there's contingency. There's better design, we might be better in some places than another. So money is going to start to flow differently between all of these pieces and parts where we, we might be able to pick up some of these other items that we weren't able to handle on the current. Program. So we're going to be talking about this a lot as, as we progress through the site. If you will. I, I personally think the way you presented things financially it makes sense to me. You gentlemen are very experienced and you know how to play the system, I guess, you know, how to keep things there. There's no increase, tax increase. We're looking to forward to the future with, with this project here. Um, I'm okay with that.
if there's vote or struggle. No, there's no vote. We just need to we just need to know that if you guys are comfortable putting a resolution on the agenda next week to authorize seeker and get the wheels moving for a March vote. I mean, it's legal counsels work pretty legal counsel with from Ferrara and Lavella's group um, and, and Nate with the financials will work pretty tirelessly to get to a point where they could feel that they could get that seeker done. Um, there's no doubt that between next week and March, it's going to be a mad sprint to make sure you get all the seeker done, you get your scope finalized, you have your meetings for the community to get them to get it publicized, help people see what's happening, provide opportunities to ask questions. Um, but without, if we can't get the resolution on next week to move forward with this, it's, you know, you're waiting until you could wait to May and you could do it in the May vote. I would probably recommend you hold off to December and just do them all together. Um, it just, and you're, you're losing time. John, I'm comfortable with what I've seen tonight over the last two I minutes. am as well. I'm still conflicted, but I feel like the same as I did back in 2005 when we had to make a decision about Staley or we did in 2009 when we redistricted or when we decided on Strau, our options are not do this or do nothing, right? Like we can't, we have to find a way forward. So I think that's the thing that would help me get it behind it. I had kind of hoped that if you put this up there and the stadium was an afterpiece, that it would have gone down a couple million dollars and I probably would have felt a little better. Um, the stadium wasn't included in the initial numbers. No, 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 but you came back with some, with different variations. And I think what Karen and I were looking for when we had our reservations before was maybe you'd give us a $9 million option and a $13 million, you know what I mean? That there'd be some variation like, oh, you could do this much now and then this much in a phase two. And, and I think that. Well, the reality, I think that, and I can't speak for them because they're the professionals, but what I would say is you saw with the stadium. We had a quote on the cost for the track and the field. And when they got going on the work, they added an entire area of track for the jumping pits. They moved them completely from the design. That flag poles were added. We did the we did the shop work thing, remember? We were able to do a lot of things additional with the money. So it's quite possible that what they're quoting us today on this area, when they start doing construction, the bids come in. And this stuff starts to happen, the site work is happening, that might all come in way under what we're planning on for today. And then maybe that frees up money to do something else inside the building or frees up money to start the stadium project. We, we just don't know. You're always going to, whatever number we're going to get, it's always going to be higher than what we're probably actually going to be needed because they got to have that contingency to make sure they don't go over budget. Rob, I need you to go over those numbers again. So this does not commit us to exhausting our current reserves. No, if we did the, um... So seventeen million dollars, seventeen nine forty two seven eighteen. Uh, fiscal put in there two point nine two five, so there'd be a zero tax impact. Twenty one point six was three point four nine to have a zero tax. Impact. So what's the? I'm sorry. What what do we take out if we do the seventeen million versus the twenty one million? What BCS company? items? It's been the BCS infrastructure items at all the elementary schools. The things that you need. That's need. Sorry. I, well, that doesn't make sense. No, I don't know. No, I, that, I, it doesn't make sense. I'm just trying to scope in here. I, I, I'm done. I'm just waiting for the season to end. The reason, just back to the field, I mean, the reason you can't significantly reduce the cost of, if you, if we do any site development on the, on the right hand portion here, there's all the infrastructure, underground, stormwater, paving, concrete walks. That's all the stuff that's supporting that. Really, the, the topping, if you will, the, the turf and the in the fields and the tennis courts. That isn't that's not the expensive part of that development. So it isn't, it's not like we can give you a 12 and a nine and a six million dollar option right i mean i guess we could it would be through the tennis courts or so but then you're talking about going back in a future project in the area that you just did work so i think sometimes looking at it in perspective of local share dollars what it would take if you were to reduce by a million or in this case what is it there's like a three million dollar gap between those two you know what is that what is that actual local share savings because you're really using just more state tax money 
to bring it to, to Rome versus going to another district. So I understand the concept of trying to break it down that way, but in the end, you're going to spend more because you're going to, you're going to, you know, get escalation. Then you're going to go back into the same site and do work again. So do we actually use seven tennis courts at a time? That's so it's seven or five is the ideal setup for tennis courts. Or I to run tournament seven. And I mean, this like I don't want to sound. I'm not trying to sound silly. This is important stuff to know, right? We we made a we've already made a mistake with our track, right? There's certain certain meets we can't host at our track because it's not eight lanes. We already made a mistake with our pool. I mean, Grant, not we, but the community, the, the decision makers, made a mistake with our pool. We can't hold sectionals there, right? Like, I don't want to make mistakes if we're asking people to outlay this money and. Again, I part of me is with Karen and I'm conflicted because there's a big need list here. But the other part of me totally sees what John and Craig sees, which is the school is 20 years old and we don't have usable facilities at the school and we bus kids all over the place and we can't bring people to our high school and be like, hey, look what, a, you know, again, I love going to Liverpool. I love going to Central Square. I love going to some of these. Um, you know, to Fayetteville, Fayetteville Manlius, I don't find as a fair comparison because they have money, but, you know, I love going and traveling with my child and being like, hey, this is how it should look when people come to Rome. So I, I'm sorry, Karen. Well, I grow the community. I mean, this is, oh, I understand this is I'm in the minority. I have no problem being in a minority, but I'm not going to change my mind. No, no. And I'm not asking you to. Oh, I just, I, I was really, at, you know, I was really, I, I was a no when I walked in the room tonight and I feel a little bit better about we still missing the fact that we're going to have to go to the community to follow the point and ask them to take care of the educational needs. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm in the minority. I don't care. I'm in the minority. But I, I think we were going to have to, I guess that was my initial question of when we looked at that 94 million, we were looking at asking the community for money anyway, right? Like there's no ifs. And, and, and I do have to say, Kara did a, she did not do a great job of justifying why we are looking at grade banding and we have a lot of work to do if that's the way we decide to go. Um, but she did do a good job of saying, listen, like you guys, like the community has to say what they're willing to contribute if they want to make, if they want certain things like smaller class sizes and, and, and different things that they want. Like it is very hard to be in a community where they don't understand that you have to make these investments. It's, it's a big challenge for us. I mean, if we can do this, if you guys, I, I just am, I am scared that something, some curveball is going to fly out and we're going to be like, oh, sorry, taxpayers, we got to ask you for a lot of money. And then the stuff we need doesn't happen. I mean, our state aid ratio is incredible. I mean, yeah. you, you, 98 cents on the dollar. I mean, that's what we should be selling for community. Look what we're getting for 98 cents on the dollar and no tax increase. Mm -hmm. And again, to the so, point I made, I think, I don't remember who I asked this. It was you, Rob, wasn't it? It was someone when we had the things up on the wall. I want a real comparison when people are like, oh, Rome's taxes are so high. I need that data on what our tax rate is per thousand because that's an apples to apples, right? Because a house in Clinton is more than a house in Rome, right? A house in New Hartford is more than a house. It's come true. And we, I present that every year as part of our budget. I Like doing that's the one you have here. to focus on for people yeah, is- we, we highlight it every year in our budget. See, but I couldn't quote you that. And I feel like as a board member, I should be able to, and I can't. Like, that's what I want to be able to go to people and say, our taxes are high relative to what? And what do you want for the investment you make? And that can change just based on assessments. It was issued. Even if you left your tax, even if you lower taxes, your tax on truth go up. Right. Assessment There's a lot of things usually in the community we deal with it every day, so we kind of know the, the impact of how, how state aid works for construction projects. So I think that's probably one of the biggest, the hardest thing to convey when they see a large project that's like, oh my gosh, this whatever, $30 million or $100 million, how, like how is that gonna affect me? You know, and, and conveying that it may cost you nothing in this case, it's hard, it's, it's generally hard for, for the public to understand. So that's really the outreach for the most part. The thing that's hard for people to understand is if we didn't spend this money on buildings, the state is not going to give this money for programming, right? Correct. This is the capital project bucket. This, this is the capital project bucket and this is the programming budget and they don't mix with each other. So I do understand your point of if we're not doing projects, we're not tapping into a funding source. 
way. And if you delay it, that's fun, the funds that are in your capital reserve will just give you less if you hold it in there longer. Well, we saw that with Strau, right? Like that's that's what happened with Strau. We voted on Strau in what, 2013? So and we didn't do it until 2017? Like we saw that. We lost a lot of what was supposed to happen to that building. Yeah, so having a cycle of continuing to vote for more capital reserve accounts is the most appropriate way to, or the best way we've seen to to address those future projects is to, all right, we filled this one up, we have this other one to start putting money in so that we can use both of those pots, right? What's remaining in this one and part of this one to accomplish this project and then vote again because they're, you know, 10 year durations, but usually they fill up beforehand depending on how big you make them. But that's my concern is that that money doesn't show up to funnel into that savings account. I, I, that's understood. And obviously in that scenario, you're going to have to make some decisions where, you know, do you not do a project at all? Or do you have a small tax impact, which then 15 years later from that project, there's a debt drop off of that project. And you do another project with the funds you took on during that first one. So districts can do zero all the time. They do, sometimes they leverage a part of the capital reserve, a debt drop off and a tax impact to do a project. It's just a matter of what you're comfortable with. We do all three, we do one. Anna or Elena, do you have thoughts? I feel like you're the only two we have. I mean, I agree with rolling forward with this. I do too. So, so what, what's the process? Uh, I'm, we good naming us. I'm sorry. I, don't I was just saying, as the new, two new people, this was a ton of, as the two. Yeah, it's like drinking through a fire hydrant. So no. Yeah. I mean, just wanted to make sure that all of that was digestible. <laughs> Can we talk about what the Rome Free Academy, you know, how that money breaks down? Because that's the that's the majority of this referendum. How much of it is is the athletic field versus the other things that are under? Uh, I don't have it right in front of me, but there the athletic well, there's what 16 all in there or 13 all in there. It's the total is so 16. Is that the presentation from last time? Option B. This is the December 22nd. Yeah, yeah. There's an option A and an option B. Yeah, that's the field and largely the um uh, the uh Fire alarm system. Yeah, that's what's listed it's, in the. What's I was wondering what the fire alarm system is about yeah, three million. So the site development costs are about. I can get you the actual so number. Ask no question is a stupid question. Like, so I have a quick. I feel like because I piggyback off of you from a couple of weeks ago, I go to a million hockey arenas. There are hockey arenas that I refuse to even go to because they don't have certain things. It's cold, or some of them have no roofs. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so as I go to all of these places, a mom of three children, small children, if I am going to be in a school district knowing my kids are going to play sports, and if I have to move, if I have to go and move to you know a base or something like that, that's how I'm going to judge my school, just like Craig talked about. I'm not going, and I came from the South. Um, sports are huge. That's the only reason, you know, a lot of people move to the South. Um, so if we're going to do something like, let's do it, like, let's not do it mediocre, like, let's do it, be done, call it a day, draw families in. Yes. I understand everybody's talking about money, 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 but like, we have to be better than the next school that's only 15 to 20 minutes away. We have to be better. So we have to get families here. So. Uh, so Peter, just the process now. So the resolution is just for a seeker. The resolution next week is for the seeker and to authorize the referendum in March. Okay. Then there's an additional resolution later on down the road that specifies what is on the referendum. So can we add the straw piece into that if that's something we want to explore? We would need to amend seeker quick by next week. Is that possible? Well, Strauss is already in there for BCS items, right? Uh, but uh, the we'll field, ask, we have we have to talk to our planning department of what impact that might have, depending on what the scope. And those are plan those old so plans. So track and stairs, stairs, not a huge thing, but track 
Maybe. Oh, the stairwells are huge. I, I mean, Tracy, Can't I guess the it's stairs, the, y'all. The, Fix those the, stairs. The point about the straw piece. Do a straw stairs, what you did in our face. The, the okay. point with the straw piece is that anything inside the building really is not a challenge for seekers. Seekers really more about what are you doing to the environment around the building. Mm -hmm. So to, to add a track in the back, it, it might not be a seeker issue. Um, because you're not probably adding lights or anything, but they might not be able to amend the seeker by next week for resolution. But that doesn't mean you couldn't add that on to the December vote when we have to do the stuff relative to the elementaries as well. I mean, we still have that chance to yeah. get that in the next go around. That's a great point. I think, frankly, it's probably best to put it in the next vote if there are classrooms being built around whatever buildings, that may impact how we position anything there also. Like how the grade levels get distributed, what you determine. There's going to be options, right? So those options are going to have various additions at different buildings that we're going to have to plan out and locate. So I would, it's tough to commit a site now when you don't know what's going to be there. Well, I think the, the track at Straw was something that was in the original plan, but really. Well, that's what I'm wondering. That's got to still be on paper somewhere. Well, well let me finish. Okay. The, the way that the way the building is used, those those grassy surfaces out there are used for other sports. I mean, you've got a track. The RFA track is only a half a mile away. If you wanted to, right? But okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the example. I had a daughter who ran track. When she was at Strau, they would bus her here to RFA to run on this track that was terrible, and then they would go to have a meet, and they would have to go to the track at RFA and they weren't used to running on it. And there's always conflicts of who has time where. Those modified kids play football. They don't get to play football on our turf. They play football at Geyer Field. I don't think there's any cost for that because we have reciprocity and use Kennedy Arena or other places. But like, if your kid is out there playing sports right now, you know, we're using cost field. We're using, we're not even always using our own space. So like, we, we made cuts to the Stroud project. And if we're looking at long range planning and we're looking at truly making us a district that is competitive, we have to look at every kid and what every kid's experience is. And if we're gonna put this up here, are we putting it up here thinking we're gonna bust a whole bunch of kids from Stroud? That's not the goal. Like we gotta make sure that not it, only does this look pretty and attractive, but it's functional for how athletics run in our district right now. And what we have right now isn't it. It's literally everybody in a, you know, scratching and clawing to be able to get time and space to practice. It's for a variety of things. So like, I'm a, I'm a function over fashion person, if you will, like this, like it got back to, we lost our cross country track, okay? The, the damage at Staley from those floods and the bridges and everything happening. We don't have a cross country track like that can't not be a part of this. We have to look at what, look at what a beautiful complex. Okay, but are we using it to serve the most number of students for the things we do at the least possible cost, including transportation all over the place? They don't let the kids walk from Straw anymore. They have to get on a bus. They don't get to walk to the stadium anymore. I don't know why, but it doesn't happen. I don't know how it did either, but if the busing goes if the busing is goes away, I guess there are a lot of walk. I don't know the semantics of that. And say the track was built here in a future project, you gotta look at maximum cost allowance. And Strau basically used, even though the aid's coming from this building, if they walk to use the one at the old site and the high school just started using this one. That makes a huge amount of sense, right? Yeah. Right. It makes a huge amount of sense, but in the meantime, those kids could walk out the back door of their school and practice at school. And that's what most other schools do. Like, I don't know why Rome is currently. How much would it cost to put a cinder track in the back of Sprout? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're on it. You're on it. Not me. Yeah. 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 Because if you do this, you're taking <laughs> out the cinder track that they're using right now. Like, that was my question a little while ago. Yeah, let's put some crushed stone back there next week and put it in the <laughs> Oops, it's just kind of gone. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm in a perfect old I miss drawing here. Yeah. So the softball and baseball overlap. Yeah. They don't physically overlap, so you can play both games at the same time. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Okay. That's yeah. kind of how it looks right now when you go play behind 
um, MV, right? Is that cost? Is that like that's how it looks? Yeah, cost field. Yeah. Like I've sat at a game at one field and there's another yeah. game like yeah, that. Yeah. Field. That's fine. Yeah. 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 I, didn't, I couldn't tell. Here. But what's in the middle? Is that a soccer field in the middle or a multi purpose field? Anything you want it to be because you can spray it. So we'll decide down the road what are permanent lines like stitched in or mm -hmm. temporary painted. So most likely, most of this will be temporary painted or yeah. all of it. It's really just allocating the space for it to make sure that the baseball, softball is spread apart. Uh, how, how, how could you do that with? I mean, they have fences around them. So they have what? Fences. You, they're they're rollout fences Rural, specifically okay. made for a turf. Yeah. Okay. okay. Same with the mounds. They, okay. they come out. Okay. So we've done a lot of these, and we'd be happy if you want to take a tour of some of them to Road trip. see what they look like. <laughs> We're all for that, right, Anna? Absolutely. Field trip. Okay. Any, any other questions? The only thing I want to ask with, with, with John, I thought. We have 45 days and we got to advertise this four times like a vote. So don't we have to pass the actual resolution for, you know? Usually it's with the, uh, well, as long as we're 45 days prior to the vote date, which would be usually you do seeker at the, you can do seeker at the beginning of the meeting and immediately after you can yeah, authorize put, the vote. I mean, it's not just we, a bland resolution. It has to be the actual resolution yes. later. Yes, unless you have a timeline that's beyond. You could do seeker at a, at a yeah, we don't. I didn't do the math in my head so just now. For this. This project we're doing all in one meeting. We have so good. I don't. When's the February meeting? Uh, um, second Thursday. Yeah, this four. You got forty-five days. It's got to be all ready to go. Yes. I would Correct. And they would be. This, this would be an all yeah. one-stop shopping. Yes. Yeah. All right. Just see. February it. meetings are the tenth. Yeah, we have to do it. And the twenty-eighth. So the the second one is late because of break. Thursday would be both. This so Thursday first. would be authorized seeker and authorized referendum. We'd be working with the bond council and I said yeah, they already have the secret house. So that is different. That's so I guess uh, I don't I don't think it's wise to kind of up to the apple cart on the secret process now. I think that we plug it into the December redistricting vote makes the most sense. We'll get it plugged in right now and we can have some time to analyze where it'll go and what we're doing with the redistricting. Okay, so I guess then the next question for me is we have, we can't be like, oh, yay, we're doing like, uh, again, I go back to the September of 2019 plan that you looked at and it was pretty comprehensive. I don't think a ton has changed. I know questions have come up about feasibility and what we can do at certain sites now. Some factors have changed. Um, I guess my question would be when do we when can we dialogue with you again once so next thursday ross is going to come and give us another presentation and on the second we have our next redistricting ad hoc so like i would obviously extend the as the chair of that i would extend the invitation to you guys if you want to hear that dialogue and what the concerns are you know you're more than welcome but i guess do we have another meeting like this as we start to like a lot of questions are going to crop up as we move closer to a reasonable plan because those those costs are going to play a role in what we decide to do ultimately i think we're a board that's focused on instructional outcomes and wanting to make an educationally sound decision where 15 20 years ago when we were doing the first phase and we did elementary it was how much space do we have how many kids do we have and how much can i get out of the money they're going to give us right and that's what we did to each building now we're in a place that we're like okay we've done a good foundation our buildings to paul Haggerty's point are you know in much better shape than a lot of buildings that have had you know but we're going to need space in and that's yeah, got to be I, our what i recommend for that would be to do the redistricting part separate of capital park decide what you want to do with redistricting and how you want things to look structurally. Then you work with the data to say, in this design, we need X classrooms of Bellamy. We need X at um, Joy, X at Stokes. And then these guys say, this is what we need. And we go to FEMA and state ed and say, this is what we need. Instead of saying, wait for them to say, this is what we can give you. We get in front of the horse and say, this is what we need. What do you do to help make it happen? Because they have said they're going to fully fund replacement of Staley. And I think that by adding on a little bit of everywhere, it's going to cost us less than building a brand new school somewhere. Unless building a brand new school to replace that is an option, 
I mean, it could be, I don't know, that might be more upset in the Apple cart than anything else. But I, I really think that once you get to that point of what do you want that elementary structure to look like, and then letting the data tell you how much you need to make that happen on each facility, then this team goes and says, here's what we need you, you need to give us in order for us to pull this off. As opposed to sitting around waiting for them to say, well, you know, we can do this much and then find out, well, we need 20% more than that. I think if the sooner we give them, this is what we need, how can you make it happen for us? We're gonna be in better shape with them. So has there been any move? Obviously COVID changed the way that we look at instruction, right? Because social distancing was never a thing. It was pack them in. And so Peter made a point at our um, ad hoc that currently the ratio is usually 27 students to a room, right? That's your aidable. Has there been any talk or any movement in state ed of maybe that's a problem if we continue to stay in the climate we are? I mean, HVAC alone is not gonna. So not in 50 years, but the limits and the aidable portion of a classroom is simply, this is the aidable portion. Can you build bigger classrooms? Yes. Is the answer. You it's can, not can you build bigger, it's can you build more? It, are, will they come back to us? Absolutely. Well, yes, you can also build more, but they're only going to aid you based on the students that are be able to populate those rooms. So you can build anything you want. You could build 30 gyms if you wanted to, but they're just not going to aid it. You know what I'm saying? So whether you build more rooms or larger rooms, you can do it. It's just going to fall on the unable side of the equation, which is sometimes okay as long as it can get absorbed in the overall project. So if we come, I mean, I mean, I have to be able to think, I'm always thinking about how all the pieces connect together as opposed to each little piece in a vacuum because yep. we just don't exist that way. So if I just can't stop vacillating on that piece that Peter gave us because many years ago when we looked at districting, at redistricting, we gave parameters, right? The board gave parameters, the committee, the redistricting committee said, we want, K through two to be 18 to 20. We want two through four to be 20 to 24. Like, I feel like they're, and, and those are arbitrary. Don't somebody quote me on those numbers, but I feel like it was in that range. And then Peter's saying, no, it's 27. So I'm Here trying to resolve in my head, if the state says it's 27 and they say, we'll aid four 27 student classrooms. And we say, sorry, no, we want six. 20 student classrooms for the students we have now and the potential growth we might be facing from incoming housing. Like, is that? So we do our preliminary submission. So we have to both look at a big picture and finite because each building's analyzed independently. So maximum cost allowance is analyzed on a building. How many teaching stations do you have? That ends up equating to building aid units, cost index, and that gives your 80 construction and 20 incidental cost. That's all you can have available to you for a five year period. So then we work within those boundaries as much as possible against an estimate to do the work. And that's gonna tell you whether you're gonna be overboard over the maximum cost allowance and have to deal with local share dollars to accomplish that. So it's all based on SED's analysis when we do a preliminary submission for each individual building for each addition you're trying to do showing the student population along with the 10 year enrollment projection. So they're assessing everything okay. all at once to, to tell you. So that doesn't mean there can't be negotiation, but negotiation is very tough with them. So you may not operate that way, meaning you have less students per classroom. They kind of don't care. And there's nothing, not much you can do to, to wow them to make them change their mind. The only possible saving grace in this situation is that you, it looks like you may have FEMA money to overcome some of that. So but the FEMA question that has yet to be answered is, is FEMA going to say, here's the money to replace the, what, 28 classrooms that you lost, 28, 30, something like that. Use it appropriately to replace classrooms, or are they going to turn, have they yet to say, like, no one has said to us yet, we, we will only give you the money if it's on that site. Right? Is that the piece they, we're still like? They, they allow it they, kind of anywhere. They pretty much said there's no strings attached to yeah. the money. They're going to determine what's necessary. That's why I'm saying, and they've actually hinted to us, we'd be better off if we tell them what we need and what we're going to do versus them kind of hemming and hawing and letting this thing sit in queue. 
So, so FEMA, yeah, FEMA money is generally 75 cents on the dollar anyway. So the other 25% would be at your aid ratio. So that's the conversations we've had we've had with state ed. So that's yeah, this isn't all locked in, but so if if FEMA does 75%, there's another 25% remaining. And whatever that dollar value is, you'll get your 98% aid on and local share will be the 2%. Well, what we're waiting percent. for is FEMA to say, this is the amount we're going to give you. And that's a long Based drop. on your loss. Yes. So we have to build all these concepts based off of your redistricting, whatever you choose, prove that out, <laughs> that it works for you, prove it out with cost to give back to FEMA and have them go yay or nay. And then also submit it to SED for a prelim submission, have them tell us how much building aid units they're going to give us. The hope is that with the FEMA money, that we will not overcome any of the maximum cost allowance per building on your local side. So we don't know that yet. So because every building is going to sort of be reassessed from what the maximum cost allowance is now, because they only have a certain amount of teaching stations. You might have four classrooms, 10, two. So that's going to totally change the game on how much money you can spend every five years at each of those buildings. Okay. And then obviously the point that we all made at the, the ad hoc committee is we have this, this resolve we have to make right now between what do we do in the immediate future to relieve the strain on the buildings from the loss of Staley that will align with where we want to go with this plan. And I think that's, I think that's what people are struggling with, not really understanding that we're fighting with right now, um, and and they're really kind of struggling with the proposals that have come forward so far. And obviously, none of us know what's going to be said next Thursday yet. But you know, we're trying to do both. We're trying to help not go into September the way we look right now, because we just compounded the inequities that we had before losing that building. But we're also trying to say, if we're going to take the time, Craig made the point last time, you know, if we could do something to help the kids now that also aligns, like we just don't want to move kids repeatedly, repeatedly. Yes. So that's kind of a good way to look at this current project that's trying to vote on is that it's devoid of the instructional piece because the instructional piece is so much in the air. We don't know where it's going to land yet. So if we start doing instructional pieces on the building, it's you know you might be going back and demoing something to make it work out for this redistricting process. So this is just infrastructure can happen in a vacuum, can get it done. You have money available. It's it's zero tax impact, clean, and it just it's just moving. And there's no escalation on it because you're going to deal with it right now. So that's that's part of the logic trail. Also, step two is the instructional. Right, which will be part of this redistrict thing is happening. So we don't know what it says exactly or what you're going to determine is the right way to go. So obviously there's a lot of steps that we still have to take with FEMA, with the state to, to let you know how that can happen. How so they're divorced. So this is a this is a standalone thing. So there's no relate there's no relationship. This is not addressing any of the redistricting issues. This is addressing infrastructure and athletics and so forth. So that's what it is. I mean, that's what you're voting on. You know, it's, it's you go ahead with this and then the, the rest will follow at some point in time when we decide how to, mm -hmm. how to overcome our deficiencies based on where we are currently at their overcrowded deficiencies. So what happens if we go forward with the um, vestibule piece of this? And for any reason, we end up taking one of these buildings. Well, although Clough is part of that, right? So even though Clough is the pre-K, that is part of it. So that's still aidable in the same way, housing our pre-K? Okay. okay. So if we were to change use of any building or take another building offline for any reason, such as, not that that's at the top of our list, but if build a building and take a building offline was a conversation or take any other build, we're not going to shoot ourselves in the foot if we do something there. We're going to know before you get it in the ground. So once you authorize a vote and, they, and everyone votes positively, we have a design period, a submission to SED, waiting to permit, then a bid and construction piece. So by that time, you know, if we're voting in December, we know what we're doing. 
right, for the redistricting. So if there's any overlap that doesn't make sense in this project, we cut it. So if there is a vestibule that we were going to do, it comes straight out and we redistribute the funds to another portion of the project that makes sense. Are you asking if they waited four years and we did something? No, I'm saying if so, right now we want to do the vestibule on every building. I don't want to say a building because I think that's because yeah. somebody's going to think that's the building we're saying, and we've is, not made any decision. Yeah, your point is if you if you do a vestibule of cloth, plan vestibule of cloth, and then for whatever reason cloth doesn't get utilized the way that it might be right now, can we scrap the vestibule thing of cloth and do something different? And the answer is yes. Yeah. No, my question is the opposite. If we or do the thing at cloth, you know, if we do the vestibule at cloth. And then in a year we go, oh, wait a minute. We just did all these vestibules, but now we want to change our plan for cloth. Are we attached? Are we tied back to cloth because we did something to cloth? As long as you don't close the building, remember we were looking, if you have debt on the building, you did work on it, you're not going to get the aid for any more aid for this. As long as it contains instructional space, right? That's your caveat. Yes. Yeah. If that's what you're asking. So if you put $5 million in joy and you closed it in a year, we would be in trouble as far as they went because it's not open anymore. We've never, like they said, they're ahead of that. So we would Okay. Never. Can that happen? Sure. Yeah. Uh, you, you build it into the overall number. You know, um, there are times when you have to go back into a space and did recently, you know, and you're still paying some aid on it. It happens, but that's what we try to avoid all the time, which is why we try and master plan out everything we do so that we don't run into that, which is like how the fuel yeah. work. We know we can just hit that one side on the road and we can clean. Someone literally posted, it, like the Sentinel article went up today and someone, sh a friend of mine shared it and a person commented on my friend's share. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why are they messing with things? I don't think that people understand that we were in a building crisis before we lost daily and before COVID. And we're in a worse building crisis now, and it is broken, right? And we just have to make sure that people understand we're not being arbitrary. And we're trying to find a plan that gives every kid an equitable chance at the most outstanding education. And I was part of it. I was part of it in 0405 when we closed, and so was Paul Haggerty, when we closed Lake Delta and reconfigured Staley. You know, I was part of it, when the, well, I wasn't super proud, you know, I was here in the community and starting to raise a family when we opened the high school, when we, I was on the committee when we did the Stroud renovation, when we redistricted, like we've literally been going in the same freaking circle for 15 years. Like we need something that people can get behind so that as Craig said, tied in with these athletic fields and all the other things, people are like, this is a great district and things are running really well here. And my kids are gonna get a great education no matter where I buy my house in Rome. And like, that's really so hard to get people to understand. That is the end goal, right? The end goal right now is that every kid who decides to go to a school in their own city school district is gonna have a beautiful building and outstanding educators and excellent programming. And that the buildings are gonna foster a nurturing environment for that program. And I, I don't know how you make people understand it when they're so vehemently opposed to change, when they don't want to spend a nickel, and when they think that we're not sitting in a room like we are right now for three hours after our work day, beating our heads against this table. Well, first of all, you have to think about you know what a couple of people said earlier. You know, we're, we're, we're never going to create the Rome district and put it all on one campus, which is kind of what the other districts have done. No, because we're not West Milan with well, like a I, third I, of the students. Can I finish? With, so that that's not going to happen. You're going to have you, we have 10, 10 buildings out there that are, are distributed over a very large district. And, and that's what we are. And and we burnt those bridges be, behind us before. If we would have built in Rome on that big complex, we could have consolidated more, but we decided to take the freebie at the base and we put the school in the absolute worst position, you know, that you can find on that base because it's, it's a wetland and it's a cliff and it's, you know, and it's all locked in by building. So, but we did it. And you know, so you're not going to go back and redo it, redo any of that. You got to, you got to go forward with what you've got. So, you know, it's wishful thinking to think that you're going to have a, a North Syracuse type of a complex. And, and it's the same thing with the stadium. They've gotten a lot of use out of that stadium and we can't walk away from that complex because it's very central and it, and it works. I mean, 
that stadium is busy all the time. I mean, you go by there, you know, what, what athletic field can you put, you know, four or five games a day on and, and not even notice it, you know? That's, that stadium has been extremely successful for us. The fact that we don't have this magnificent grandstand, you know, is, is, is unfortunate because, you know, it was, it's, it's, it's dated. But on the other hand, you know, you know, the football games of the past may never come back. Football is really declining as a sport at the high school level. You know, it's a, I know everybody would like to see the stadium full of people, but. I don't know. There were some games this year that were full. I was at the Proctor RFA game well, that's it. and at homecoming. It was, it was pretty full. I think it's more the regret I have of the past is the decisions that were made in 2009. And I think that ever since then, we have not, we have been sticking our finger in the dam of what's wrong with our elementary structure and the haves and have nots and the kids lacking opportunities and overcrowded buildings versus buildings with small class sizes and special requests and all the things that go along with it. And I just, like, I, I keep trying to have good dialogue with people and say, these are all the things we're looking at more equitable class sizes, better collaboration among teachers for delivery of instruction, rooms that facilitate different types of learning. You know, your kids don't sit in our kids don't sit in a desk in a row anymore the way that we did when we went to school. And it's 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 hard. This is hard to tell people we're not being arbitrary. We're not being random. We're being super intentional about where we want this district to go. So, but we're not know. being completely honest about it. A K6 uh, grade configuration working over six or seven buildings. I, I, I don't, I am with you on grade banding. I know people are opposed to it, but I think the dialogue we had at the first ad hoc said if we could do the buildings in pairs, if those could be married school communities so that K through six are still part of the same learning community partner schools i think you could make it work i think that's people's and people are like oh it's too many transitions i'm like you had that many transitions when you had staley it's not the number of transitions it's fostering a sense of we are all rome and we want every kid no matter which building they go to to be getting an equitable education and we know that that's not happening it wasn't happening when we started talking about it in 2007 and it's not happening in 2022 we have to do better and to compound the problem, we lost a building. Now, maybe that's our saving grace. Maybe that's great money and a, and a forcing us to have better conversations. But either way, like none of us are sitting in this room right now because we are just like, eh, they're gonna give us 98% aid. What kind of a project can we make up? Right. So I think, so Peter's charged us with always planning for the next two projects. So right now that one's March and December. So as soon as March drops off the book, the December, thing re redistricting isn't the end we then start looking at the one past that too so we're going to redistrict fill these additions whatever it takes to make that occur and then say all right these wings need to be renovated or these windows or roofs need to be repaired and that's going to be in the project right after that so we're constantly planning for these two projects and everything else dumps to the end so that's the dialogue that we're all going to have and prioritizing work and achieving this overall master plan. Well, and it's why we need a long range plan and, and it has to align with our goals. And I mean, that's the workshop tomorrow, right? Goal setting so that when we make a decision, we can say, does this align with where we want the overall district to go? You know, does this align with who we want to be as a board and the decisions we want to make? Because people's fear is that this board is making this decision, but that the next board is going to be like, well, what if you change your mind and you change the structure again? because we have put our kids through a lot since in 20 years, right? Since we opened high school. We've, I had a person say to me today, wait, Staley was a five, six? Yes, because her kids are in elementary school at Bellamy right now. I'm like, that was invisible to her. Yes, Staley was a five, six. Straw was a seven, eight for a little while. Straw and Staley were a six, seven, eight for a little while. You know, it used to be a seven through nine if you were not in, like we've, we've changed so much. So I get people's reluctance. I get that they're nervous. And it's why I appreciate you guys coming in here and entertaining the questions that we have, because we have to make a strong, educated decision fiscally and educationally. It's not, it's not anything we're really taking lightly. We're at your disposal. So um, if you choose to move forward, the next meeting, that 45 day period for, for public interaction, you know, we'd be happy to be there supporting you so if there's any questions you want us to field we can do that we're voting on the 27th thank you yes we're on the 27th 
Thank you. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. So we'll work together on the facilities meeting on the books then, Paul. We'll work with you on schedule another day. Time. Yeah. Next month. All right. Good morning. Right in front of the